everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Data Standard Audio Experience. And on our podcast today, we have Jim Walker, the CTO and Evangelist for Public Sector at UiPath. And today we're going to be speaking about AI and ML chatbots. So welcome to the show, Jim. It's such a pleasure to have you today. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. And could you just go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience and just share more about the work that you're doing today? Yeah, thanks again for having me. And thanks for those of that are listening and watching. So I'm Jim Walker. I'm a 32-year government employee. But in the last four years, I've been working with an outstanding global team at UiPath where we're trying to bring automation to the masses, trying to democratize automation and really make the workplace a better place for human achievement. So just couldn't be more excited to share this with you. Yeah, fantastic. And we're excited to hear more about the work that you're doing today. Can you tell us about robotic process automation and what this is and how have you been working with it? Yeah, so robotic process automation is really the emulation of what you do every day at work with your mouse, your keyboard and your computer screen. And the goal is to take out repetitive work, mundane work, boring work off of the the workforce and give it to the robots. Now, it's not that that work doesn't need to be done. If you're a government agency and you're processing unemployment claims during COVID, that's important work. If you're processing uh, SNAP, the food stamp program or passports, that's important work. But it's boring just to sit there all day long and copy and paste stuff off of one thing, move it into another database, close it out as a ticket and send it to somebody else before any work gets done on it. So being able to alleviate that from the workforce so they can spend more time talking to other humans about human activity is really what we're trying to do with automation at UiPath. Yeah, interesting stuff that you're doing. And are there any challenges that come with building a series of pipelines? I'm sure there's a lot of challenges that come up with your line of work. Yeah, so the challenges are always interesting. The the product itself, certainly proven, we're in 92 federal agencies in 27 states right now. So when we go into a, to a state or to a federal agency and they say, well, we'd like to do a proof of concept. That's kind of like tipping your toe in the water to see if the tub is warm or not. Right. And what we're saying is there are plenty of people that are in there now. The water is fine. You can get in, but they're still a little nervous. So you have to help them overcome that. And and that's kind of being a good trusted advisor to them. But you also have the problem that they do something. It works. They're absolutely amazed. And then they're kind of stuck on what's next. And so you do have to have that ugly word of governance. Some say bureaucracy around it, but you need a governance program in place to start developing your pipeline. Should we automate this or not? Who are we automating for and why we're automating? But what we see is once everyone realizes what it's doing for their workplace, no one ever says, this is great, get rid of it. It's really, can it also do something else for us? Yeah, and great things that you're working on today. And I want to switch over to just um, the the idea of RPA. And is RPA finally going to deliver on the promises of automation and where we humans get to work smarter or harder? Yeah, so so this is where great uh, a question because we get to stop saying RPA, right? In the scheme of things, there's robotic process automation and chatbot, natural language process and AI and ML. So all of this digital labor that's been presented to us over the last five or six years, all of that digital labor is really could be called automation. Automation is finally going to give us the ability to stop being robots to our computers and let our computers work with themselves and give us good outcomes while we as people work with other people to do things like I'm a child welfare advocate in Chicago and I don't get enough time to go see if the children are being taken care of. Well, if I free up 35 minutes a day of a person's time, they could stop on the way to or the way back from work and do a spot check that could verify a kid is doing perfectly well or to look at signs that say, I'm going to need to follow up on this. So again, allowing more time for human behavior while we get all of the work done that the automations require. Yeah, very interesting. And how do you think, I I know the technology is just constantly changing as we progress and as everything just advances in the world. And so how is automation going to innovate the future? Yeah, so it's going to allow us to do things like if you're in the federal government and you want to go to a conference, you have to ask your supervisor, can I go? When he or she says yes, then you have to put this into the learning management system so they have a record of it. And someone has to check to see if more than 20 people are going to that event. And then they send you back confirmation that you're good. And then you have to put in your travel request. And that was because the way we did everything manually needed all of these checks. 
But if I did that same system to you today in an automation and I put in my request to go and here's the where I want to, uh, the time I want to fly and everything, when my supervisor says, yes, you can go, it doesn't come back to me. It goes straight to the learning management system that electronically checks to see whether or not it's okay that we have less than 20 people going and it hits over the travel office. So instead of three days later because people were out and not available, 30 minutes later, I get this travel form because my supervisor approved it, and I have a travel form now that says I'm going to a conference that I need to make me a better government employee. But there's also at the Veterans Administration where they had the CARES Act, and the CARES Act came out by Congress saying, veterans, you can go downtown and get health care, which was a great idea, except the downtown doctor said, we're not paying for electronic filing. So they started mailing in medical records. And the VA showed me a picture of a wall locker with 96 inches of paper piled up that needed to be scanned, scraped, and digitally inserted into their electronic filing system. They ran a pilot, took them three days to build it with automation. They can put a little artificial intelligence and machine learning on it now to make it even smarter, but it files it back into the system so that that patient's records are right where they need to be in a matter of a day versus we're going to get to 96 inches. And that's at 140 odd hospitals around the country. So that 96 inches starts to become a mile's worth of paper pretty quick. So we're really going to benefit from this the same way that, you know, we benefited from automobiles over horse-drawn carriages, the same way that nobody wants to go back to having a phone in their house that's only connected to a wall in the kitchen. You know, they want a mobile phone that they can sit out on a boat someplace and text, look what I'm doing. That's what automation is going to do to our workforce. It's going to be a tremendous opportunity for us all. Absolutely. Great insight with just everything really advancing in the world. What kind of advice would you give to someone who wanted to go into a role very similarly to yours? Yeah, so one, I'm after all my time in government, I was surprised that somebody says, Jim, be a spokesperson. You know, I got the CTO part, but that evangelist part. But the beauty that we have today, I mean, I can't imagine what the last year would have been for all of us citizens had we not had the internet. And I remember in 1983, when I went, first went into the Army, I had a dial-up modem and a Commodore 64 computer, and it was 1500 baud, and you thought it was the last great thing in computers. So you can take and become a lifelong learner today and learn from the internet, learn from webinars and podcasts like this. At UiPath, we have an academy. You can go online, take all of our training for free, get certified, you know, and, and to be in there. But the wave of automation started already. You want to get on there like with a surfboard and get to the top of that wave. And you're going to ride that not only as a career for the next 15, 20, 25 years, and you're going to grow with all the new things, but you're also going to be out there having fun because this is going to be a wave that's really going to be fun to be on as we help people not only make work easier, but my goodness, citizens getting their stuff processed faster you know, benefits coming to them quicker when they're not eligible for something, they know about it real quick and they can make exceptions. These are things that when we're trying to do it manually, it's just the whole, like going to the DMV downtown and sitting there with ticket number 67 and saying, all I needed to do was change my address. Yeah, no, great advice for those who want to go into the same field as you. And thank you so much for being on our show today, Jim. It was so great to have you and hear more about your experiences. And we at The Data Standard, we're trying to build a community where everyone can just be able to network and collaborate with each other. So what is something that we can help you do? Yeah, so I think, you know, the data is so important and it's only become important over the last few years. The Navy was fielding an aircraft called the F-35 aircraft and actually went back to Congress and said, this program's in jeopardy, millions and millions of dollars because we have too much data now. And they realized that an RPA bot from UiPath and an artificial intelligence could actually grab all this data coming off of a flight and process it in a time when we could actually use the data. So you're, anybody in your community, you know, look, reach out into the RPA world. We have a UiPath community. It's 150,000 odd people strong around the globe. And they're always asking for, how do I do this? What could I do with that? A data scientist that really wants to drive success and, and the value of their data is going to re rely on RPA and AI and ML. And it's a perfect merger of a function with, with resources. Yeah, no, that's awesome to hear. And where can everyone find you online, Jim, to connect with you? Yeah, so I love it. Um, I've, 
I didn't understand LinkedIn three years ago when I joined UiPath and some little intern said, Jim, you're going to have to be on LinkedIn. And I said, if you can show it to me in an hour, otherwise I'm a dinosaur. And she showed me in an hour. So happy to, to connect with you on LinkedIn. It's uh, walker Jim, and it's the same thing for uh, Twitter. So more than happy to join. I actually like people to not like anything I say. I like them to put comments in. The value of LinkedIn to me is the comments, not the likes, but I'm happy to have uh, anybody. And I always love to respond to your your type of comments. It's great interaction and keeps you kind of lifelong learning. Yeah, I actually really like that insight that you brought, just having more comments just so that you can kind of keep the conversation going. And it's almost more engagement than, than likes on LinkedIn. So yes. I think that's great insight. And thank you so much, Jim, for joining me today on our show. It was so great to have you. And we hope to speak to you again soon in the future. Yes, good luck. Have a great day.